What's up, OCNers? Let's talk about sound cards. More specifically, Sound Blaster from Creative Labs. One could say that Creative Labs has been around for quite a few years, specializing in PC audio and, quite frankly, is the founding father of add-in sound cards. But with the popularity of motherboards recently having much better onboard sound than they did of yesteryear, does it even matter in 2019? A sound card is much like a GPU. It's supposed to take the sound processing off the CPU load and process it with its own set of coprocessors, DAC, and an amp. However, you will often see motherboards with shielded PCBs that feature all the good makings of a good onboard audio solution. Meaning, motherboard makers are getting pretty dang good at the audio game. So, why would anyone want to look at a dedicated sound card in 2019? Hey, hey, I am Blue Devil, and thanks for stopping by for a chat about sound cards in 2019. So let me just break the ice right away. Up until this review, I've been using my onboard Supreme FX sound card on my Asus Maximus Codex Z370 motherboard. Oh my god. I'm pretty sure many of you are too. Well, Creative Labs sent over this AE9 high res sound card with a breakout box for me to look at, which really made me question if sound cards are really even needed anymore. For me, sound cards started way back when Creative launched the Sound Blaster 16. Wolfenstein 3D launched in May 1992, with the OG Sound Blaster 16 launching the following June. For me, that was pure gaming bliss. 16-bit sound featuring the Yamaha Opal 3. Fast forward to the Audigy 2, which steps up audio processing to 24-bit with 192kHz for stereo playback, with the updated EMU 10K2 processor, and my audio was better than ever. After that, I kind of fell off the PC bandwagon for a while and had come back to it in the early 2000s. This time, however, I didn't opt for a sound card, but rather I depended on the onboard sound card, mainly Realtek, on my Enforce 4 motherboard. Like I stated before, I've been using my onboard Supreme FX sound card with no issues. So why would anyone bother with a PCIe-based sound card? Why not get an external DAC amp combo? Which, mind you, takes most of the audio issues away from your computer, like EMI. Which, if you check out Hardware Connect's video on the AE9 with the RTX 20 series, puts out some serious EMI, which translates to a lot of noise when it comes to line level noise. Creative has combated this issue with their clean line technology to further suppress the power supply's ripple noise that is present when running an RTX 20 series GPU at full load. So how this works is first the mic input, then the mic preamp, pretty standard stuff, right? However, the DSP and recording communications crosstalk is almost completely eliminated from the PCIe power socket with Creative's clean line technology within a separate path. Pretty neat, eh? I myself was experiencing this EMI phenomenon while just mousing around the desktop without any load. Installed the AE9 and poof, it was gone. But what happens when I connect the mic and try to record? Do I get noise like other reviewers? So here is a test with zero dB gain on the microphone. And here is a test with plus dB gain on the microphone. And here's a test with plus 20 dB gain on the microphone. I am also happy to report that the AE9 works particularly well with all kinds of headphones, from 1 ohm IEMs all the way up to 600 ohm beasts like the Bear Dynamic DT990 Pros. All that is needed is a flick of the switch on the audio control module with the setting for IEM, N, and hi. I tested with my AKG K553 Pros, Creative's Irvana SE, and Irvana Trio IEMs. So I busted out Simple Man by Shinedown on Google Play Music. Set on the highest setting, aka 320 kilobits per second, which IMO sounds fantastic. However, the AE9 is capable of 32 bit, 384 kilohertz playback. Every strike of the strings on the guitar, every note of Brent Smith's vocal was crystal clear. Next up was Colton Dixon's rendition of Billy Joel's Piano Man. Again, the vocals were on point, the piano so crisp. Finally, one of my favorite songs of all time, Under the Bridge by Red Hot Chili Peppers. Again, the guitar was crisp, the snare drum jumps right out at you, and Anthony Kiedis' voice is as distinctive as you were sitting right next to him. Connection-wise, the AE9 between the actual sound card and audio control module is pretty well full-featured. A mini HDMI input to feed the ACM, a pair of RCA inputs, a 3.5mm rear and C-sub jacks, along with Toslink in and out. 
So why does the AE9 sound so good? Well, I'm glad you asked. Creative has developed an X-Amp discrete headphone bi-amplifier. So each channel, the left and right channels in this case, has its own voltage application, preamp, and output stages, which working together with the swappable op amps, which happen to be Nichicon fine gold caps, which only makes sense for rich, high quality audio playback. The audio control module is a nice desktop addition, provided it's powered via PCIe six pin connection on the sound card itself. So there's another cable to manage inside your PC case. The ACM is connected by the mini HDMI connection, making it extremely convenient to plug in a set of cans or headset with either a 3.5 millimeter or quarter inch plug connection. On the far left side is a plus 48 volt phantom powered XLR input for those that would like to use that connection, which can be toggled with one of the two red buttons on the ACM. Handling the volume and mute is the large and very satisfying volume knob, glowing white when the audio is on with the light flashing when muted. Holding down the volume knob will turn off the light completely. Just to the left of the volume knob is the SBX button, which handles preset Sound Blaster profiles if the Sound Blaster command software is installed. The Sound Blaster command software is very similar to other versions, including a equalizer, playback, recording, and scout modes. Also included in the Sound Blaster creative command software is the option to change the encoder being used from no encoder, Dolby Audio, and DTS Connect. So in closing, has my mind been changed about using a sound card? Hell yeah, it has. Being frank, I'm blown away on how far audio fidelity has come. It's a pretty safe bet this AE9 is going into my personal gaming and editing rig when I build it. So watch out for that one, it's gonna be good. Okay guys, I'm Blue Devil. Thank you for reading, watching. Don't forget to smash that thumbs up and be sure to share the crap out of this. Thanks again guys, Blue Devil, out.